Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. This is another video I'm not sure if anybody else is going to enjoy but me, but I really had a lot of fun painting this, and um, I hope you enjoy the time lapse. If you'd like a real-time version of this tutorial, it is up now in Critique Club. For just $5 a month, you have access to, gee, almost 100 tutorials that are real-time in mixed media, so if you like to try a bunch of different supplies, it is a wonderful opportunity. Plus, you can upload your work for feedback from me, so I will link to that in the video description if you are interested and I post two new real-time tutorials every single month along with a creative prompt so um, you can go check out that if you're interested also uh, until the end of January 2023 I have the Critique Club archive bundle on sale and also the 2022 Critique Club archive on sale uh, for 50% off and I will put that in the video description as well if you are interested in uh, having lifetime access to those older tutorials I started off by using a ruler and a pencil to sketch on my crayons. I'm using a pretty dark soft pencil. I don't recommend that. Um, but because I wanted it to show up on camera really well, sometimes when you have like a big white sheet of paper, it uh, it kind of gets blown out. So I'm using a darker pencil than I would recommend using it, uh, using if you're not filming, I guess. Um, so you could get, do like a, uh, a like a, I would say maybe like a 2H pencil or something, or um, you could just trace a reference photo, which I will put in Critique Club, and it's also it'll also be on my Instagram page if you want to go see it there. Um, but it's kind of fun to draw, and I mean it's really it's straight lines, and that's just about it really. So don't be intimidated. But you know if you just want to get to painting and you feel like tracing, eh, I'm not gonna hold it against you. Um, yeah, and just sketch on. Now, one thing I would recommend though, if you are going to do a lot of sketching and erasing, it's a good idea to sketch on scrap paper, just like a piece of copy paper, and then use some graphite transfer paper to transfer it onto your good watercolor paper. Because I did struggle erasing some of these lines, even though I didn't um, press very hard. The fact that this lead was so dark, this is the Blackwing Matte Pencil, which it's, um, it's a really soft, dark pencil. I really enjoy it, but it, it was difficult to erase on this watercolor paper. And I'm using Arches 140 pound cold press watercolor paper block for this. Um, and a block just means that it's bound on all four sides, so you don't need to tape it down in case you haven't heard that term before. A uh, very convenient. You pay a little bit more per page in paper to, to buy a block versus a pad, but um, the convenience of it, I think, makes it worth it. But obviously, you can tape it down if you prefer. Um, I'm just refining my sketch here. I think it probably took about 20 minutes on the drawing, maybe. Um, I find that if there's one point in your painting process you don't want to skimp on, it is on the drawing because it will come and bite you in the butt if you skimp on the drawing process and you um, and you don't get it very accurate. So I will give you that little piece of advice. These watercolors I'm using are the Core watercolors made by Golden. They are really wonderful paints. The reason I chose them is because for this piece, um, for a couple of reasons. For one is I haven't used them in a while and I really like them. Uh, also, they're extremely vibrant and they also have a really nice flow, which I really didn't need the flowing aspect in this particular painting, but um, I don't know, just felt like using them. I haven't used them in a while and they are really beautiful paints. Uh, the way I would recommend picking up these paints if you are curious about trying them, they have these six color sets that are, I think they're called, I don't know if they're called like introductory sets or tryout sets, but um, my pick, if you if you just want to try um, a couple colors and see what's unique about core. I would recommend the high chroma set, the six color set. Um, it, it's generally around uh, between 30 and 40 bucks for those six tubes and it comes in a little tin. It used to come in the tins that are the size of the one I'm showing you on screen right now, but they have made them smaller. I think some people complained at how big they were, which is kind of ridiculous because they were awesome. And I bought all six, three of the, the three, six introductory sets they sold. And I love those tins. They are so handy to like store and uh, use as palettes, store your paints in and use as palettes because they've got all those little dimples on the on the lid of the tin for mixing. So um, so I would recommend that the high chroma set of six if you only want to buy a couple colors and see what chrome is all about. I feel like that set is the most ubiquitous for core watercolors. Um, or if you know that you really want to go all in and you want to try a bunch of these colors, they have both a set of 12 and a set of 24. Um, 
colors and I would say just go for the set of 24 if you know you really want to want to try it the the introductory set is quite affordable by the tube they are kind of pricey so I definitely would recommend going with one of those introductory sets first unless you know there's just a particular color you want and that's all um they're the colors are beautiful but their high chroma colors are the ones that really kind of um uh, win the day, I guess. They're so unique, and I think they would be a really beautiful addition to whatever you already have for watercolor paints because they're just extra saturated, extra vibrant, extra flowy, just just so fun. They have that beautiful cobalt teal color in there too. So that would be my tip. I'll try to remember to link those sets down below so you can check them out. Um, Blick generally has uh, the best price on those, but as always, you know, check around just to make sure. Um, I have found that Blick has been matching Amazon prices so I have, I've been noticing lately that you rarely find a better price on Amazon. So I love that because I feel like the shipping is, well, the shipping is quicker for me from Blick than Amazon um, up here in Maine. Uh, but I also notice the shipping is much nicer in a lot of products, especially like colored pencils where you really don't want them banged around. Um, so that's just my two cents. You can obviously do what you want. And you don't need these paints to follow along with this. You can use whatever watercolors you have on hand, or you would even use ink if you wanted to. You don't have to have watercolors. And that's something that um, I, I urge you to consider every time you're like following a tutorial online, you're watching a tutorial. Don't let the fact that you don't have exactly what the person teaching you has. You can substitute. The first thing you should be, the first place you should be shopping before you start a project is your own stash. It's going to save you money. It's going to make sure those products get used before they go bad. Well, let's say you're an acrylic painter and you're like, boy, I'd really like to try watercolors. I don't have any. Um, but boy, that's a really cool project. I'd like to try it. So you're an acrylic painter. Um, before you run out to the store and you buy some watercolors or you go online and you order some, what you could try is um, watercolor paper would definitely be kind of the must have for this project, I would say, because like this technique wouldn't work on canvas as well. Um, you could obviously paint a painting like this on, with acrylics on canvas. I mean, absolutely. But say you want to try watercolor. So I would say, yeah, definitely get a watercolor paper. But maybe instead of going out and buying watercolor paints, maybe you thin down some acrylic paints. Because the, the nice thing about acrylics is that if you use them on a porous surface like watercolor paper, um, you don't have to worry about over thinning it. It's going to be fine. It's not like you're tossing your watercolor paper in the washing machine and expecting it not to, you know, wash out. You're not going to be, you know, if you frame it, you're going to be framing it behind glass. So, I mean, you don't really have to worry about underbinding acrylics if you're working on paper. So that's the first thing you could do. You could thin down your watercolors, or maybe you dig through your kids' uh, art supply stash and you find a set of Prang watercolors or Crayola or whatever. You use those. I mean, you can definitely use what you have first before you decide if you want to invest. You may thin down those acrylic paints, and do this painting and be like, geez, I really don't like that really thin aspect of it. Maybe watercolor's not for you and you just learn that without spending too much extra money. You know what I mean? So uh, see what you have first. If I'm using a pastel pencil, maybe you could use a chalk pastel stick or a colored pencil. If I'm using colored pencils and you don't have colored pencils, maybe you want to just uh, put another layer of paint or you want to use some gouache or something else like that. Think about what you have and um, and try that first. You know, unless, you know, something I've done has inspired you so much. You're like, wow, Lindsay loves watercolor. I don't have any watercolors, but I think I really want to give this a good go. I'm willing to put in the time and effort. That's when you buy the paints. That's when you, you order the watercolors. When you are saying like, yeah, I'm going to, I'm not going to, I'm going to get these paints and I'm going to give myself a fair shot. I'm going to give the paints a fair shot. I'm going to do a few paintings before I decide whether they're for me or not. Then then it's worth the investment. If you just want to do one project because you like that particular project, but you don't think you're going to use that medium again, use what you have and just like substitute and try to approximate the, uh, the effects the best you can. Another thing you could do, if you didn't have any watercolor paper, uh, watercolor paints, maybe you are a rubber stamper and you have ink pads or you have water-based markers. You could um, press an ink pad onto a plate or scribble a marker onto a ceramic plate and pick it up with a wet brush and do the same thing. Those products will be not be light fast, meaning they could fade easily. But if you're just seeing what you think about a material, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, try before you buy, essentially. Or maybe you have a friend that does watercolor and you can borrow one of their palettes for an afternoon so you could see if you like it before you buy. I know um, 
when I was teaching at the library regularly, we purchased a bunch of Cotman watercolor palettes to do our classes with and a bunch of watercolor greeting cards and people would borrow the watercolor palettes and that way they can see before they exp they uh, spend their own money whether watercolor is really for them. And by the time they're ready to spend their own money, they're probably even gonna upgrade into a nicer quality level of paint, but they got to try before they buy. Your local library might have art supplies that you can borrow. Ours does, ours has yarn, ours has art supplies, ours has um, uh, baking pans, like uh, cake pans, the, the uh, you know, the fancy ones for birthdays that are shaped in different characters and stuff. Um, some libraries have tools. So, you know, look at those resources. Now, I know that I make part of my, my living by, um, you know, affiliate links to products, but I don't want anyone buying stuff that they're not going to use because that doesn't feel good to buy things and then let them sit on the shelf. So, um, so yeah, never, never feel like you have to opt into that. You know, this is, this is your creative journey and the best supplies to use are the ones you already have. So what I'm doing here in this layer is I was just putting a shadow on the sides. So when you add shading to the sides of a round thing, it look, makes it look more round. So before they were just kind of flat sticks, but when I put the, um, the shading on the edges, it gave it a little bit more roundness. So that's why I was doing in that layer. Um, now I want to get some cast shadows. Now we already did some cast shadows like when we were we did our wet into wet background. We put some very light shadows. We're gonna do some darker ones. And what I'm doing is making gray. And what I do is I start off by making an orange with um, with the red and the yellow. And then I add some blue into the orange because blue and orange are opposites and neutralize that down. So basically I need to have a big puddle of it. So I'm just adding little bits of primaries until I get to the tone that I want. And I want kind of like a, uh, a grayish purpley color. Now I do have three, I did end up using three blues in this painting, I used um, cobalt teal, ultramarine blue, and cerulean, and then I used quin red and a cad yellow deep, just for, or it might have been cad yellow medium. It's it's a warmer cad yellow, just for your um, reference. But you don't have to. You could use convenience colors rather than mixing. The reason I wanted to mix with this bec was because um, I wanted there to be a cohesive look between the crayons. When I set up my still life, which if you scroll back to the beginning of the video, you'll see it up in the corner. When I set up my still life, um, I had a, like a vision in my mind's eye and it was gorgeous, let me tell you. It was bright and rainbowy and beautiful and colorful. And then when I went and dug through my crayon box to set up my still life, I was like, oh, these wrappers are kind of faded and then the colors are kind of mad. I couldn't find, you know, exactly the colors that I wanted to go together. And I was a little disappointed in that. And then I was really doubting myself. It's like, is this gonna be a good painting? Is anybody gonna wanna watch it or do it? Um, I was feeling really, uh, really unsure about the whole process, but then I'm like, you know what? I can make these whatever colors I want. I just need to get to the reference down so I can see how the shadows are gonna fall and I'll go from there. And that worked out really well. So my crayons are ending up much brighter. Now, some things I really liked when I was looking at my still life was I could see some color in some of the shadows. The orange, red, and yellow crayons actually had some of their color in the shadow. And I think that might be because they're raised up a little bit and so, um, um, so light bounced off the white paper they were sitting on and reflected their color a little bit. Um, it didn't so much in the green one, so, but, or it might be it's something with the colors, the warmer colors um, reflecting more than just being gobbled up. I'm not sure, but whatever, for whatever reason, it looked cool. And I wanted to get that, um, I wanted to get that element in those shadows. So you can take a still life of something that's really ordinary, kind of boring, like a pile of crayons and make it interesting by how you um, how you look for the details, you look for the colors, and you pick out those things that people would probably just overlook and ignore. And that's how you know ordinary things become interesting in art. The marker I'm using here is an Artix marker. It is uh, one of their quote unquote acrylic markers. They're actually more like these double-ended ones are more like a gouache than an acrylic because if I was to wash over this with water, they would lift up a bit. Not quite as much as gouache, but definitely not as permanent as acrylics. And I'm just using these markers to make the little, um, the little like, logo and the little like decorations on the end of the wrappers. Uh, I found it was easier to write the write the word Crayola and then go around it with the black marker and fill in the oval. Now, I didn't realize at first that there was the, the center of the O was not filled in. So um, that was a little oopsie, but um, you know, just look at, look at a crayon wrapper. If you have some crayons around, I would definitely recommend setting up your own still life. And then you can, you know, pick them up and really look at them and make sure that you're getting the detail that you want.
And uh, this is a little bit repetitive and tedious, and I'm just gonna go through and do the rest of these. So this painting took me about two and a half hours to do. The Critique Club tutorials probably closer to two hours because this tedious part here, after I demonstrated how to do the wrappers, I did um, edit that part out because there was, uh, you know, there's just a lot of that, but you can see it here on the time lapse anyway. I've been doing that if it's like a really kind of long, tedious section of a um, of a painting just to save a little bit of time because the tutorials on Critique Club are on the long side there. Uh, I think they're probably all over an hour. Some uh, are over two hours. So um, yeah, you get a lot of content for your $5 a month over there uh, or for your, if you buy the archives, you get a lot of content that you can just keep forever. Um, and yeah, you just keep, Keep on keeping on. So this is a bullet tip, this end I'm using here. There's also a brush tip that's actually pretty responsive, but I found on the textured watercolor paper, Arches Cold Press is a little more textured than other cold press. And I was kind of concerned that it was gonna wear down the brush tip on these markers. So I decided to stick to the bullet tip. I think you could probably do this with a, uh, like a Tombow marker as well, because it's black. It doesn't really need to be opaque. It's gonna be darker than the colors you use underneath. So this is definitely a use whatever you have on hand type of thing. Just keep in mind that um, you don't wanna brush over this black unless you're using something that's perfectly permanent, but we're done our watercolor layer. So so we really shouldn't need to go in with anything wet after this point. Just keep that in mind when you're going. But um, like I said, look in and see what you have. Uh, I do like these Artix acrylic markers, even though they're not really acrylic. I like them a lot because you don't have to pump them to get them started. They do have some single-ended acrylic markers that are waterproof. So if that's some, and they're brush marker. Um, so if that's something you're looking for, just get the ones that are single-ended and you also don't have to pump them and they're waterproof. I'm really surprised that you didn't have to pump them because, um, and they're all flowing and they all work really well. That's like the most irritating thing about the acrylic markers I've used in the past is you have to pump them to get them started and sometimes you have to pump them uh, if you haven't used them in a while, but I haven't had any issues with any of my Artix ones clogging up. Granted, I've only had them for about like, I don't know, a year or so, uh, and some are newer than that, but um, they've been very reliable and they're fairly affordable, especially compared to like Posca pens and Molotow markers and other um, art acrylic paint markers that you find out there on the market today. So yeah, I've got, uh, I've got, I've got, you know, I've got a high opinion of them, I should say. And don't worry that, um, I know this is gonna, these probably look really like garish, like the wrappers look really garish and dark right now, but we're not done yet. So don't worry about that. It can always seem a little disconcerting when you put a, when you're starting a mixed media piece and you've got watercolor as a base or whatever you have as the base, it can always feel a little bit discordant when you first put another new media on it. But um, the wonderful thing about mixed media is that you can pull from different, arenas, different art supplies, and make it cohesive as you go. S mixing your own colors is a great way to make things cohesive. Um, layering is a great way to make things cohesive. So, you know, just kind of think of um, of the harmony of using the same colors over and over again, and the, um, you know, repetition from item to item, um, but then also have some things that are a little bit different, so it's interesting. Now here I'm using a fine liner, which is basically a like a fine tip felt pen that um, this one's waterproof. Most most of your fine liners will be. And I am outlining because I felt that um, because I do a lot of uh, when I'm when I'm painting, especially when I haven't drawn it on separate paper and transferred it, I am re evaluating my painting as I go. And sometimes I am moving edges and I am kind of reworking things as I go along. That's why I like mixed media because it allows you to do that reworking as you go. You're not as locked in as you are with traditional watercolor where you've got, you know, um, you're reserving the whites of your paper and you are um, working completely transparent medium. Um, that requires a little more plan planning when you want to stay purely watercolor. Um, I like to be able to change things up as I go. I like to be able to rework things. I like to continue to refine my drawing as I go. And so for that, mixed media works well for me. Um, and I love to do watercolor or markers as a base. I think it's, I think it's a lot of fun. And uh, I think that life is short and you should go for what you are drawn to and uh, not try to do a particular type of medium because you think that's the right one or that's a real art medium or that's um, a 
proper art medium. I think you should go for what you're drawn to, whether it is painting or quilting or card making or oil paints or acrylic paints, you know, do what speaks to you. You know, that's how you're going to be the happiest. That's how you're going to stick with it because you're going to be constantly interested in what you're making. I think these little outlines really help. I don't uh, decide whether I'm going to outline something or fine line something until I'm towards the end of it. Now, I'm really starting to feel like it's coming together, but I feel like it needs a little bit more weight and body to the crayons. And my first thought is to actually take some color pencils, which are wax based, and um, color in the tips of the crayons, like what's not the wrapper, color in the actual waxy crayon parts. And I absolutely love how that came out. I feel like it really gave the texture of the crayon and it um, helped define it and give it that kind of like waxy sheen. I'm using a variety of different uh, brands here. I've got some Dergwent drawing pencils, which are a muted earth tone range. I highly recommend those. They got kind of expensive though. Um, I'm also using some Prismacolors, some Holbein, and some Brute Funer Macron colors, which are their new pastel ranges. I highly recommend the Brute Funer Macron pencils because um, I feel like no matter what you already have for colored pencils, that is like a range that's completely lighter than anything you'd have in a standard like set of 72 or 120 pencils. And um, they're very soft and creamy and wonderful for mixed media because they're, they really pop and show up over other colors because they're so opaque. So um, if you are looking to expand your colored pencil range and you happen to enjoy Prismacolors, I highly recommend the Brute Funer Macarons because they really feel like a Prismacolor or even kind of like a Holbein. I think, think they feel a little softer than a Holbein myself, um, but they are going to layer on top, which is what you generally would use those really pastel colors for. You'd use them for highlights. So the fact that they're softer than most other pencils, they're going to layer on top of most other pencils and bring out those highlights and just um, allow you to blend out really easily. So there's my two cents on that. Um, but they're definitely not a standalone set. You wouldn't want to buy that set and have that be it. That's not the best way to spend. If you, if you don't have any color pencils and you're like, I got, you know, I got 20 bucks to spend. In that case, I would definitely recommend you get something that's more of an assortment because you, you know, pastels is just one small range of the spectrum of a value range. You definitely need some darker colors and whatnot. Um, but I just, I really enjoy how this is starting to get a little more weight and a little more depth and a little bit more, um, substantiability. <laughs> is that a word? Substantiability? Gosh, it doesn't sound right now that I say it out loud. Thanks a lot. Uh, <laughs> but you know what I mean? It feels more substantive, substantive. Oh, I'm, I'm coming up with all kinds of words today, guys. Boy, how, how do you like that vocabulary? <laughs> Um, but I do really just love the luminosity of colored pencils. I love the waxy, um, uh, depth and, uh, yeah, I just mm, look at that periwinkle. That's pretty. That's so nice. Um, and, uh, yeah, just kind of put, puttering around doing this. I am going to use a Prismacolor white to do highlights on the wax portions. I buy my Prismacolor white pencils by the box and, um, I will be very sad if they ever stop selling open stock because uh, it is so nice to have, even if you don't use Prismacolors because you get frustrated with their breakage and um, light fastness and things, having the Prismacolor white is just so handy. It, for me, it's the softest white that I've used. I think Holbein has one called a soft white, which is almost like, I think like an eyeliner softness. I don't have that, but um, I'm really happy with the Prismacolor white because I don't have a big problem with breakage and it's just very reliable and very soft, so it sticks on top of most any other pencil that I've used it with. Now, that spice rack there, that's what it is. It's a spice rack. People ask me all the time, what is that pen colored pencil rack you have? It's a spice rack I bought in the 90s from a little home goods store called Lecter's, and it had little glass bottles of spices in it. So I store my, uh, my pastel pencils in there. I store my ink-filled brush pens in there, some craft knife, knives and some odds and ends. So that's what I haven't seen them for sale, except they do make them out of bamboo. I've seen them on Amazon made out of bamboo. Um, so I'm using the pastel pencils on the wrappers because I want the wrappers to have a matte papery finish uh, to contrast from the waxy, shiny, smooth finish of the crayon itself. So that's a nice way you can use an actual physical texture difference. And plus you do get a visual, different visual texture using the pastels to highlight the wrappers. It just gives it that papery goodness. And that's pretty much 
um, how I ended up finishing these off. I did use, and you'll see that in a couple minutes, I did use a little gel pen on top of the waxy portions just to bring a little more shine to them. Um, but yeah, I, I just love this combination. I think what I'm going to do today, guys, is I'm going to sit down with a craft knife and I'm going to sharpen my pastel pencils because let me tell you, I haven't done that in a while and they are all looking awfully sad. They're all very blunt <laughs> and I've never had good luck sharpening them in a sharpener. In fact, I have jammed my electric sharpener trying to sharpen pastel pencils in them before. Um, I have jammed up any handheld pencil sharpener I have. Derwent's coming out with a pastel pencil sharpener though, so I'm really looking forward to that. And there are those white highlights I told you about with the gel pen. Um, I just love it. I, I, I love how this came out. I hope you enjoyed this time lapse. I hope it encourages you to maybe set up a still life with some random stuff around your house. And, um, you know, this is going to be such a cute decoration in my studio, I think. And it was fun to paint and it's fun to look at. I hope you enjoyed this. Links to Critique Club are in the video description below if you're interested. Thanks again for watching, and as always, happy crafting. Bye!